Welcome to the Callisto Protocol, a new survival horror game where you wake up and escape prison during a viral outbreak, team up with a fellow inmate, wear diegetic UI, get stuck on biomass, swap batteries indoors, dismember mutants with creepy names, use telekinesis, stop corpses, travel through waste processing tunnels, spot new monsters behind unbreakable glass, get tutorialized by finger paint, FaceTime your antagonist, go outside in Minnesota, find suits that upgrade your HP and pockets, fall through a disintegrating building, find a devoted weirdo who wants to evolve humanity because of reasons are for nerds, and I'll hold back on endgame spoilers for now, but I could go on. I can't see people going, oh, that's Death Space 4. The Callisto Protocol is the first game from Striking Distance Studios, an independent team headed up by Dead Space's original exec producer, Glenn Schofield, but has no official ties to Dead Space or its publisher, Electronic Arts. However, EA is about to release a Dead Space remake, threatening to split the audience just eight weeks after Callisto's release. So the Callisto Protocol isn't just in the shadow of its predecessor, it's competing with it. But after the early reviews sent this game to the Burn Ward, I entered Black Iron prison with reduced expectations, except Space Fight Club was actually fun. Really fun. I am Jack's wasted life. I guess you could say I like the Callisto Protocol, but in their rush to beat Dead Space to market, the devs likely cut content and skipped playtesting, and it really shows. Striking Distance have already applied fixes to gameplay mechanics post launch based on player feedback, such as speeding up healing animations and letting you skip lengthy death scenes. So I hesitate to nitpick gameplay issues that might be fixed by the time you watch this. But what won't be fixed is the questionable storytelling. And yet, there are moments moments of brilliance in the narrative here that set up what could have been a much better game. So stick with me until the end because I can fix the Callisto Protocol's story. We open on Europa looking like Walmart after Black Friday where a toxic outbreak has killed everyone except for Danny. The news tells us Danny is the terrorist responsible and wait, that's one more for the opening. That's the Ishimura. Yeah, I had everybody on board died some sort of terrorist attack. Meanwhile, Jacob and Max are freelance cargo pilots departing from Callisto, a moon orbiting Jupiter and home to Black Iron Prison. It's our last run, Max. I'm done talking about it. Then what do you want me to say? Oh, well, thank you. Because after this job, we're never gonna have to work another day in our lives. And this was a great start. I had just enough questions about why this cargo was so concerning and why this job paid so well. Max, we got trouble. What's up? We've been boarded. Yeah, I'm guessing. Max was right to be worried. Danny and the oh, snap, she is a terrorist cell have slipped onto Jacob's ship. After venting the intruders, Danny shoots out the windows, causing an oxygen leak and forcing a crash on Callisto. Jacob and Danny are the only survivors. We're boarded by. Let go of me! Her! Her! She's the one who. When the prison's guards arrive, they capture both Jacob and Danny and make them new inmates at Black Iron Prison. Pause with me here. This is a great setup for rising conflict. Jacob and Danny both survived a harrowing crash they believe the other one is responsible for. Their friends have just died and they each think the other's to blame. And we have no idea why Danny targeted Jacob's ship. So let's kick back and... Why? Oh, we're just... This is going to be all about you. You were inmate. 532-521. You address me as Captain Ferris. Sam Witwer as Captain Ferris is just confident and folksy enough that it's impactful when his menacing side pops out. But this game pulls focus from the two leads to show off a character whose lifespan, like me on Twitter, is about to get f***ing cancelled. Jacob is fitted with hit points by Dr. Mahler and tossed in a cell. Upon waking up, everything is literally on fire, and the inmates and guards have mutated into hideous creatures whose only desire is to punch your face. So you'll have to use your charm and diplomacy to escape from Snow Alcatraz. You're that pilot they just brought in, yeah? Yeah, well look, I've been in here half my life. I know this place. I've got a plan to get out. If you help me out of this cell, I'll help you, yeah? You meet Elias, one of the only prisoners not infected, who says he can help you escape if you open his cell. Elias is serving time for exposition dumping and he will strike again. He's somehow a third wheel on a two-person team, but at least he helps you sneak past Captain Ferris. You. Huh. I told you. This is my kingdom. It's all yours. 
You learn to dodge enemy attacks and start off with a giant crowbar, then a stun baton, a kinesis glove, and five different guns as you level up from disempowered to a human blender. That would be fine, but other than spitters, every mutant is a melee fighter, and you can turn spitters into melee fighters by simply removing their face. So every enemy rushes at you immediately, leaving only seconds before you're forced into a slap fight. Since the game doesn't shower you with ammo, it doesn't pay to fight at a distance. So why is there only one melee weapon and five guns? Think of how much more fun this would be with a chainsaw or a sledgehammer. Hell, give me a golf club and I'll turn this place into Bioshock. If we're gonna get out of here, we need a ship, one that you can fly. Now, I found an inmate with the skills to hack the network and call one down from orbit. Bad news is they're in the shoe, maximum security. He's found a hacker in solitary confinement, so Jacob heads there to free them. And sure enough, the hacker... This is the right one. ...is Danny. Hey, did you know it was her? Is this who we're looking for? Yeah, it was. No, I just knew it was someone who could help us, then right? why would I help you? Well, look, I've been here forever. Right? I've got all the information on this place, and I can get us to the hangar. All right, and you, you can call down a shuttle, and, and he can fly out. Okay, finally Danny's back, and we have three unlikely survivors working together and... Thanks. I'll take my chances. Ugh. Two unlikely survivors. Our heroes make it to the hangar train, but Ferris, infected but somehow still conscious, vents them out of the airlock, setting up the game's theme. Elias dies and Jacob finds Danny pinned down in a nearby garage, and she grapples with a reluctant choice of teaming up with Jacob or losing her face. Hey, you don't have to like me and I don't have to like you, but Elias was right. We don't stand a chance alone, but together we might just make it out of here alive. Fine. How do I know I can trust you? Here, take this. You'll need it. Those things are everywhere. Name's Jacob, by the way. I know who you are. Finally, almost halfway through the game, we find out why Danny hitched a ride on Jacob's ship. What's in here? Uh, medical supplies? Bullshit. Open it. Why? Because I said so. We're not going anywhere until you do. What? Yep, just like I told you. But records show you made multiple drops right before the incident. Yeah, me and a dozen other cargo ships. Don't try to talk your way out of this. I know you were involved. I had nothing to do with what happened on Europa. So Danny and the Outer Way were trying to prevent another outbreak like the one on Europa, and they thought the evidence was on Jacob's ship. We reach the hangar and Danny calls the ship down, but... Wait, what are you doing? It's not me. The warden appears, blasts the ship out of the sky, and Jacob does his best impression of my credit score. When a dev team is under a tight deadline and they don't have time to play test everything, it's common to prioritize testing as early in the game as possible, because that's what journalists and potential buyers are most likely to see. I can't say the Callisto Protocol didn't play test the second half of their game, but I can type it. Because little did I know, the shittiest levels were yet to come. You descend underground to escape the collapsing hangar, to the ruins of an old colony that housed the original terraformers of Callisto. Late in the project, the colony was scrapped and the UJC built Black Iron Prison on top of it. We almost got killed just trying to get out of Black this Iron. This isn't about escape, Jacob. No, what's it about? Not anymore. What's it about? Answers! Why did the warden shoot down one of its own ships? I don't know. And how is it connected to Europa? So you two are headed back to Black Iron. But first you have to get through our guest stars, the clickers from The Last of Us, who hunt you using sound and spawn more enemies out of the walls if you're detected. Here's an example of noise that will drive them all towards you. But lucky for you, this is completely silent. This goes on for almost an hour, and these blind Groots absolutely hate me, so at least we have something in common. You finally find a moving platform and go loud again, but first, you meet Two-Head. Two-Head sucks, and this fight is just as creative as the boss's name. Two-Head is the game's one and only mini-boss who fights you four times in an hour, which is Two-Head, 
too often. If you have the maxed out upgrades for the riot gun that hits him for three shots at once, he's not so bad. But if you don't have the explosive rounds, like I didn't, you have to shoot him 19 times. You make one mistake and you have to watch a long death animation, long loading time, and his intro just to start all over again. And if you're saying to yourself, get good scrub, I know bosses are supposed to be a test of skill, but calling them bosses implies there's more than one of them. The colonists are all dead, but thanks to Elias recording instructions for us in the sewer levels, we know core devices do more than light up your neck. They record and transfer the wearer's memories. So Danny uses hers to read the colonists and sees the UJC wiped out the entire mining colony after everyone started getting sick. There's an audio log where a colonist is acting as a mole for some group called the Circle. And you are not prepared for what the circle is yet. Whatever you're imagining, it is so much stupider than that. You find the original dig site for the colony, explaining that the miners found an alien creature under the planet's surface, and the larva inside it infected the miners who turned into monsters, and it's dead space. It's just f***ing dead space. Jacob finds a case identical to the medical supplies he was hauling, but knows just where to check for a secret compartment, hiding a cylinder containing a mutant larva and this game's missing playtest data. Ferris has gone full on Wesker and has been looking forward to reuniting. Unfortunately for you, his love language is physical touch. You win the fight, but Danny has been cheating on you. Oh, false alarm. She's just infected. I won't turn into one of those things. No, 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 no. Okay, that's not gonna happen. Hey, we are gonna fix this. How? We're gonna stick to the plan. We're gonna get to the Warden's Tower. There's gotta be a way to reverse this. You don't know that. No, I don't. <laughs> We're not gonna give up now. We're gonna finish this thing together. We're getting into the endgame now, so there'll be spoilers from here on. Jacob and Danny return to Black Iron, and they're quickly recaptured by the only competent guards in the whole game. So now you're off to serve five whole seconds of hard time. I have Danny. Where is she? The lab, at the heart of the prison. He's monitoring everything, but we can talk here. I can get you to the warden. I can cure her. This game has been gradually empowering you, and this level should be the crescendo. Like that moment in control where you let loose with all your upgraded powers and just see how far you've come. But the final hallways here are the same fights over and over, like everything else in control. Just tell me how we can cure her. You can use this to synthesize an antidote, but you'll need to extract a sample from the warden's elf. This is what? During the original outbreak, the colonists known as Subject Zero, demonstrated a unique ability to synthesize the biofish, to control it. Now, the Warden seeks to replicate the conditions of the original outbreak, hoping to recreate Subject Zero as Subject Alpha. I'll give you three guesses who that's gonna be, but if you need more than one, then congratulations. You are this game's target audience. I have no idea what happened on Europa. I wasn't there when the attack happened. No. But she was. Are you sure you really want to? Yes! Do you wish? What did you do to me? Gave you what you wanted. The curse of knowledge. Your core is linked with hers now. But her memories will fill in the gaps, give you the answers you seek. Europa was not a terrorist attack. The virus was accidentally released from a UJC lab. Danny survived the outbreak, but her sister Lily did not. Your dead co-pilot forces you to look at the pink music box on the ground, but it was never a pink music box. It was a cylinder just like the one hidden in Jacob's crates. Earlier on the ship, Jacob found the secret compartment in the UJC crate and the cylinder inside. What we got here is none of our business. Those cylinders contained the Callisto larva that broke out on Europa and killed Danny's sister. I could have stopped this. But I didn't. This was our fault. Hold on, was it? Going back to Dead Space 2, we learn Isaac encouraged Nicole to take the job on the Ishimura, so I understand why there might be some tension between them. But even if Isaac blames himself for his role in her decision, no rational person would assume Isaac should have known her ship would be overrun with space zombies. Jacob finding a hidden compartment in a crate and deciding it isn't his problem contributed to the outbreak on Europa, but that doesn't make him responsible. Jacob heads to Cole's office. He's on a Zoom call with the alien 
Italian Illuminati called the Circle, who unleashed the virus on everyone in Black Iron Prison to have them kill each other until a single alpha emerged. And if you're getting Dr. Mercer flashbacks here, you're wrong because at least Mercer's motivations barely made sense. Dr. Mercer from Dead Space was a religious fanatic who wanted to evolve humanity and build a regenerating hunter that wouldn't die. And it's hard to take either one seriously when they're trying so hard to turn all of humanity into these. Be so awesome. Be so cool. But that evolution did occur, and Cole found his alpha in Captain Ferris. However, the only way to test if Ferris is the true alpha is to have him fight Jacob. That's it, bring in the iceberg. The Callisto Protocol is published by Krafton, most famous for the Battle Royale game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, or PUBG. Callisto was originally set in the PUBG universe, which confused fans because PUBG is a multiplayer shooter and this is a horror game. But a few months before release, Schofield confirmed the game was no longer connected to PUBG. But that's not entirely true. In the colony, you find references to an earlier outbreak taking place somewhere called Paramo. If that sounds familiar, that's a map in PUBG. He approaches. The survivor. The survivor. Solitarius. Solitarius. Where's the Alpha? And here we are with a secret society whose chant is Vir Solitarius, which translates roughly from Latin to Lone Man, and the Circle thinks it's very important that the final two fight to the death. This could only be more connected to PUBG if Jacob won a chicken dinner. Ferris turns into a mega monster because of course he does, and the game sends in groups of exploders to manage while one-shot McGee stalks you around the room. You eventually beat him, take Ferris's blood, and cure Danny. I never do this. No. This time you do. You two run to the escape pods, but there's just one. Jacob shoves Danny in the evidence to prove what happened inside the pod and launches it. You don't know what you're doing! I didn't. But I do now. I do belong here. Now Danny can prove what happened while Jacob stays behind, presumably to die. But Mahler has other plans for Jacob, setting us up for what will likely be the DLC. Jacob, there might be a way out after all. But I'm going to need your help. So how would I fix the Callisto Protocol? First, I don't mind this game using what worked in Dead Space. When we streamed this, a number of viewers were excited to see how these two games were similar and wanted to buy it based on that. So aligning with what your players already want is a fine enough strategy. Before I start, let me know in the comments how you would fix the Callisto Protocol, and I'll tweet my favorite responses to Glenn Schofield in the two minutes before he blocks me. Since you could build anything with all the time, money, and developers that live in my imagination, I'm gonna rewrite the Callisto Protocol without using any new locations, characters, gameplay mechanics, or major story beats. You could even keep the ridiculous PUBG reveal. The Callisto Protocol isn't weaker because of what this game borrowed from Dead Space, it's weaker because of what it didn't, namely three unlikely survivors trying to escape an outbreak. Second, I want this game to go harder on the theme of taking responsibility for what you've done. Can't keep running from what you've done. Black Iron is where I belong. for what he's done. We keep the original scene with Jacob and Danny on the ride to Black Iron, but we stick with them instead of Ferris. We don't learn answers, but we take the time we should have originally to set up their conflict. Jacob breaks out Elias, Elias shares his plan, they break out Danny. Well, look, I've been here forever. Well, I've got all the information on this place and I can get us to the hangar. All right, now you, you can call down a shuttle and, and he can fly out. We can do this, we just gotta stick together, all right? But Danny reluctantly stays with the group instead of leaving. We have some mistrust and arguing between Jacob and Danny, but Elias insists we need each other for this plan to work. At some point, Elias mentions the elevator leading below the prison, which he would know about because... I've been in it half my life. Ferris vents the team and Elias dies. Jacob is devastated, but just like in the game, Danny cuts out his core device. He knew Black Iron like the back of his hand. Hey, what are you doing? Hey! But this time, she tells Jacob about core syncing, introducing the concept to us much earlier. We keep the scene where Danny gives Jacob the riot gun to prove she trusts him, and heading to Jacob's old ship and finding only medical supplies. 
Danny gets infected much earlier, just after the ship crashes, but the infection time is slower. Jacob wants to return to the prison to find a cure for Mahler, and remembers the elevator Elias mentioned. Danny already synced with Elias, so Jacob syncs with Danny to find out where the underground elevator from the prison is. But Jacob doesn't know that syncs work both ways. Danny learns that Jacob knew the UJC were going to hurt people with whatever was in those cylinders, but he really needed the money. Didn't even tell Max, had the chance to turn down the job, but said he would take it. Make him much more responsible for what happened on Europa. When his memories leak into Danny's and she realizes Jacob is responsible for Lily's death, she's too weak to fight Jacob or the mutants who keep attacking, so she needs him to survive. She keeps asking questions about the cargo, but he lies or deflects and talks about how he was deep in debt back on Europa and needed a way out. When they reach the elevator, she confronts him. He admits what happened, tries to explain himself, apologizes, she tries to kill him, but this is when the guards catch them. Mahler summons Jacob from his cell, she gives Danny the inhibitor, and offers a cure if Jacob gets a sample from Ferris, just like in the original game. Jacob and Danny go together, she's very weak but still angry. Jacob knows that if he cures her, she'll kill him. We have the big reveal about Alpha Ferris, and the Circle wants a 1v1 fight. They want to separate Jacob and Danny, but Danny refuses to let Jacob fight alone. She'll die if he dies, and also don't give the Circle the very thing they want. The Circle is obsessed with competition, survival of the fittest, Vir Solitarius. But Jacob and Danny have learned the way they work best is when they're working together. They take down Ferris, and Jacob receives the sample. You think you've beaten us? Ferris was weak, an imperfect vessel. But in that sample is the key to unlocking a centuries-old dream. That's not failure, Mr. Lee. That's progress. Leave the sample and walk away. Now, the choice Cole offers Jacob is way more meaningful because there are real stakes if Jacob cures her. We can both have everything we want. So tell me, Mr. Lee, what do you want? I could've stopped this. Jacob decides to trust Danny, and he cures her. Danny declines to kill Jacob. They finally trust each other, but when they reach the exit, there's only one escape pod. Like before, Jacob gives Danny the cylinder and shoves her inside, telling her that, like Mahler, I'm sorry. For everything. I do belong here. Danny has forgiven Jacob, but Jacob hasn't forgiven himself for what he's done. Now Danny has the evidence and the cylinder, and we end on Jacob and Mahler queuing up the DLC. Glenn Schofield said if given a choice, he wouldn't have remade Dead Space. He crunched to get the Callisto Protocol out before the Dead Space remake, but... He and his team ultimately cut some corners and introduced an intriguing world with some rough edges. He swung first, but didn't knock out the competition. Will the Callisto Protocol survive the 1v1 with Glenn's other creation? Veer Solitarius.